Hi everyone, welcome to our product, my product demonstration, um, Mind the Gap and how to align and empower teams to deliver better products faster. Um, my name is Sharon, I'll be moderating our demonstra demonstration session. Just a quick run through of what we can expect from today's webinar. We'll first go through some of the ground rules for today, and then we'll begin the demonstration followed by a quick Q&A session. To finish up our hour together, we'll share some exciting announcements that are in our pipeline. And before we get into the nitty gritty, let's just go through some quick housekeeping items. So the first is that the webinar will run for approximately 40 minutes, and then we will hold a Q&A session at the end. If you have any questions, please be sure to type them into the chat box so we can then answer them at the very end. Finally, just, just to make sure everyone has the best experience, experience possible, possible, we're going to have everyone muted to avoid any background noise. And then we're now going to pass it on to Chris, our presenter for today. Hi, everyone. I'm a director of product management here at Blueprint. I'm excited to be able to show you some of the capabilities in Storyteller. So I'm just going to flip over to um, the application to start our demo. So just let me log in here. Just taking a second to load. All right. So uh, this is the main storyteller interface. I'm going to open uh, a project workspace so I can show you the product. So I'll just search, search forward here. here. And I'll go ahead and open an artifact in my project. So I'll open this uh, new feature request called Analytics Dashboard. The Storyteller interface is divided into a couple different components or panels. On the left, you have what we call the Explorer. This is where you organize all your different artifacts, your projects, um, et cetera, into different folders to match how you like to work. So in my case, I've organized it in a kind of classic product management kind of way with an icebox, a backlog, and things that are in progress. Um, you can do things like move things with drag and drop around the Explorer. So if I want to move artifacts around to different, different areas, I can do that quickly and easily with drag and drop. You'll, You'll also, also notice, notice that things, things are organized, organized hierarchically. Higher hierarchical. So I've got a feature here that I decomposed into epics, which then are decomposed into stories. And those relationships persist across the application. The main view here is what we call the detailed view. Um, and this has all the different properties or attributes about your artifact. Um, you can have different properties um, with different rules, whether they're required or not, um, etc. Our artifact model is super flexible, um, so we don't dictate what kind of artifacts you create in the system. Um, we do pre-ship with things like features, epics, etc. But you can create your own artifact types um, for your own business to match your own needs. The, we also include a workflow. Um, so the workflow feature tracks states on artifacts. So you can select different states, you can track progress on different items, much like you see in other tools. Um, with the workflow in Storyteller, it also can trigger a lot of different automated actions. For example, I can automatically generate emails to people who are noted on the artifact. Um, I can trigger the creation of new artifacts. I can update properties. Um, I can do a lot of different automated actions if I hook my uh, artifacts up to a workflow. The other uh, part of the Storyteller interface is what's called the utility panel. And the utility panel is here on the right. That's where we can track relationships, discussions, files, and history. You'll notice that each artifact in the Storyteller is versioned, so it can always go back to past versions to take a look at what's changed. Storyteller, Storyteller also integrates with 
all of the different tools in your SDLC, so tools like JIRA version one for downstream work management. We also um, integrate to other tools like maybe your um, support desk, like a Zendesk or a Salesforce, or a portfolio management tool like version one. One of the strengths of Storyteller is its ability to link different types of information together to give you overall perspective of what's going on in your organization. So one way we can do that is with traces. So traces um, are a way to link different artifacts together. So in this case, I've got a feature and I'm gonna hook it up or I'm gonna trace it to a strategic theme. Strategic, so I know which, um, which of the business themes this feature is going to be delivering on. So if I'll just publish that to create a new version. Now, now if, if I, I go, go to my themes, themes and I look, look at, at the theme increased time on mobile site that I just traced to, I can open that and I can run what's called an impact analysis. And an impact analysis is the visual display of how all the different artifacts that you trace together are interconnected. So you can see in this case, I've got a business theme of increased time on mobile site um, that's being delivered by a number of different features that I have in my backlog. So in this case, the analytics dashboard, mobile fund transfer, et cetera. Then I can see which uh, epics underlie each of those features and then even down to this individual story. So if, um, for example, if we change our strategic themes or the business decides that this strategic theme is less important, we can immediately see what's been impacted by um, what's, you know, what's associated with it and what the impact of that change is to the work that we have in flight. Storyteller is also a great collaboration platform. So you, in, in the enterprise, you obviously have many people working on single projects. Um, one way in which you can collaborate is with the discussions. So you can start a discussion on any artifact and storyteller. Um, so I can just type something in here. I can use the app mention feature. So I can app mention, which will generate a list of um, customers or a list of users on the system. Let's just try that again. Huh. I did try this just before um, the webinar started. That sometimes happens with the demo system. So what I would do is give me a list of all the users on the system. I would tag the comment with, with, with their, their name and then I would uh, send them an email um, with with um, details about the artifact. The comments are also threaded, so I can reply to a comment. Um, I can also have status on my comments, so I can open or close them. One of the great advantages of trying to keep that comment and discussion in the Storyteller application is that um, you have that information, you have a permanent record of that information, that information is content in context to what the discussion is, and it's not lost in an endless stream of email chains that kind of get lost over time. Since we are working at scale with lots of information, um, another way you can work in a storyteller is in what we call list view. So this allows me instead of working on many artifacts sorry, working on one artifact at a time, I can, I can work, work on many, many artifacts, artifacts at the same time. So, so I can um, create, I can add or remove columns uh, to my list that I'm working on. So let's just add a couple here. So I'll add create it on. I can quickly sort on any of those comments. I can add filters. So let's um, just filter by artifact type. I'm going to filter by feature, I think. Let's see, let's do feature. And so now I'm dealing with just a list of my features. And if I want to make an update to that, I can do that in line by just clicking into the individual cell on the list. 
I also have access to the utility panel for each of those artifacts, so those other capabilities we briefly touched on. I can also do bulk actions from the artifact list. So for example, I can select many artifacts. Um, under here is bulk actions. I can do things like add them to a review, a baseline, a collection. I can reuse them, export them to, into a document format. Or uh, one of the great features is what we call bulk edit. This allows me to update, make an update to a set of artifacts that I've chosen um, in one sort of user action. So I'll choose the property that I want to update. So let's say I want to update story points for all my artifacts. Um, just change it all to 22 and then I'll apply and publish. And if I add story points in as a column, we'll be able to see that. So add story points in as a column. So that quickly updated each of the story points to 22. So you can imagine if you're, you're done <clears throat> doing something like priorities have changed, you need to move a bunch of things from one iteration to the next, to next, next another release of the software. software. You, you can, can do, do that, that quickly, quickly and easily um, in Storyteller um, and get that kind of Excel-like view for working with your information. Storyteller, Storyteller has, a has a number of different other, other types, types of relationships, relationships as well. As well. One, One of the newer ones, ones that we've added to the system is called um, Reuse and its companion feature reconciliation. So imagine, for example, that um, I'm working with um, my non-functional requirements. So we have a list of non-functional requirements that we have to use whenever we're working or developing new systems or software. So let's say it's recover password. Um, so I have to do some investigation on whether or not we need to change this for the business, but I'm not quite ready to make that change. So what I can do is I can reuse that artifact. Um, I'll put it to the in progress folder. So what this does is it creates a copy of that artifact. It creates what we call a reuse relationship between the two artifacts which is a special kind of relationship. And then I can go and um, make changes, changes to that after I've done my investigation. So let's, let's say, say uh, must implement two-factor authentication. So um, that way I've done the research, I've published this. Now you'll notice that this little red flag appeared. This tells me that my original artifact and the one I'm working with, the one I've developed or extended, um, no longer matches the original one. So when I'm ready, when I've done my change, I can essentially check my artifact back in, much like you would do with a line of code. Um, can reconcile my changes back to the original. So let's do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overwrite two. So that means I'm going to take my changes that I've created here and overwrite them to the artifact that was I originally started with. Now these two artifacts are in sync. Their changes are there. And now the artifact, your non-functional requirements that the whole business uses um, in my master library has also been updated. And this is essentially live and would apply to any future projects. So far, we've been looking at text-based artifacts. In addition to text-based artifacts, Storyteller also has a number of visual artifacts to create different types of models in the system. The first I'm gonna look at is what we call the Universal Model Editor. Uh, the Universal Model Editor allows you to create a number of different diagram types in the system. Um, so I'll just start one out. We start with a blank canvas, and this should look um, very familiar to anyone who's used any sort of diagramming tools in the past. Um, along the right left here, we have different shape libraries. So we have, for example, we have the complete BPMN 2.0 library. We have basic shapes, use case shapes, entity relationships. And the one we added most recently was a UI mock-up library, which will allow you to create 
different kinds of wireframes or visualizations about the applications you're creating in the system. So I drag a couple of shapes on here. So you drag and drop them. Um, you can, you know, move them. You can spin them. You can easily connect them with different connectors by hovering over them. Um, so all that kind of basic functionality is there. If I want to format those shapes, I'll find those formatting options over here. So if I wanted to do something like change the fill color, I can quickly change the fill color. So all, so all those sort, sort of formatting, formatting options um, are available over here. Let me just bring that back up. So things like um, font, position, if I don't want to drag and drop it into position, um, et cetera, I can also Turn on grid lines, copy shapes, cut them, undo actions, um, etc. The BPMN shapes also have, let's use that as an example. If a shape has a special behavior, like in BPMN, there are different types of tasks and activity markers, you'll find those down here. Um, so I can change this to um, a loop, and that symbol will appear here. The connectors are also highly configurable, so I can change the weight of the line. And we have what we think are a complete set of different connection types, so you can model different types of diagrams. So, for example, if you're creating a database, um, you can use these to show many to one relationships. One of the advantages of the storyteller diagramming tool is each of these items on the canvas, each shape is its own sub-artifact. What that means is you have access to the whole rich set of functional capabilities behind Storyteller for each shape on the canvas. So for example, I can create trace relationships, which we looked at a little while ago. I can add comments or discussions um, on any of the shapes down to the individual shape level. So I can do tracing or comments at the individual shape level or at, um, at a more artifact level. So imagine if you're, this is a task um, that outlines a business process at a fairly high level in my diagram. I could link this to other artifacts that provide more detail about that process or that shape. Um, so that's kind of, quick look at what, what the UME can do in terms of functionality. Instead of uh, creating a diagram from scratch, let me show you a couple uh, ones that I went ahead and created before the webinar. So this is an example of um, a, a BPM, BPMN diagram for a support process. Let me just zoom out a little bit so we can bring the whole thing on the screen. So these can get quite big and quite complex. This is still a pretty simple example, um, but you can see we've got the swim lanes, the different types of connection points, the different decisions, um, all within in the one diagram type. We can also do um, something like a little more creative. So this is a customer journey map to help us understand um, where our customers, how their journey with the organization works, um, the different touch points in our organization. And I can also link any of these shapes to um, anything else in the system. So lead generation, I have a link to another artifact called lead generation that would go in more details about this. Um, I can also do things like wireframes. So this is a super simple wireframe um, to give you an idea of what we can do. So you can put a wireframe in a browser frame. You can have different controls like date controls, um, radio buttons, drop downs, comments. So all of the basic controls you would expect to see in an application um, are available here. You can also do things, of course, like upload images um, for your branding or add different um, icons um, in the system as well. Like, so for example, these question marks, marks and check marks are icons that you can that ship with the system. 
So a super powerful way to help communicate um, your solution intent, your solution design to different stakeholders. So descriptions using textual artifacts decomposed into individual stories, augmented with rich visualizations to outline a process or a UI mock-up or a screen to really help give everyone the full picture of what you're working with. One of the other key visual modeling artifacts in Storyteller is called what we call the process artifact. Let me just bring one, an example of one up here. Um, so what this allows you to do is to model user system behavior. Um, it's set up so that whenever you have a user action, it results in a system response. So it describes step by step um, the different behavior of your systems. One of the, the most powerful things about the process editor is that it um, is able to generate, automatically generate a number of different assets for you. Um, one of the things that it can generate is individual user stories. So the user stories that it'll generate will be individual artifacts, but they're in this format. So this tells me it puts the user story in the common as a bank supervisor, I want to approve the model so that I can affirm the models are correct. So the standard user story format, and then it automatically generates acceptance criteria based on all the different paths that um, you've outlined in your model or in your diagram. Once these user stories are generated, um, they can be synced, as I mentioned earlier, we do integrate with a number of different tools. So these same user stories can be synced over to your development tool like Jira. You can also do things like at screen mockups or images into your model. So in this case, I've taken a couple whiteboard diagrams um, to provide greater context to this particular task. And I can add several different ones um, into the system here. Along with um, user stories, it also generates um, test cases, comprehensive test cases. One of the um, advantages of modeling out system behavior, I find personally anyways, is that it really forces me as a product manager to think about all the different scenarios that we account for. So going through this process of specifying the user action followed by the system response really makes me think about all the different possibilities the user could do, all the different edge cases, so we can account for them and have high quality uh, development work right out of the gate. We can also view um, the process model as structured text, so I can see it more in a textual view. Um, that lets me kind of read it like a story as opposed to a visual artifact. We also can put it in what we call walkthrough mode. So I'll choose walkthrough mode. And this is a great way to um, walk stakeholders through what the user experience is gonna be for whatever you're creating. So I'll just make this full screen. So here I have my initial screen, in this case, again, it's just a simple whiteboard diagram. It could be as rich as you want. It could be a high fidelity mockup. In the user, I have two choices here. So I can either um, click here and then I go to the next screen, or as a user, I go to a different screen as well. So I could take, show my stakeholders the full journey um, that a user would experience with the application. All right, so let's go back to the edit mode. Um, to add tasks, it's pretty simple. You just do add task, and then you get the user system response. Just reload that. Just discard my changes there. You can also model, um, here I've modeled different system conditions. So what happens if the signature is accepted or not accepted, I can also um, create different user choices as well. So when the user has um, 
different choices that they can make. We really see those, so current Blueprint users might be familiar with our use case editor. We really see this as the next evolution of the use case editor that we have in Blueprint. Still lets you generate those test cases, has the added benefit of generating user stories, and still gives you the discipline of creating uh, detailed models as well. All right, so moving on. Um, the next thing I wanted to take a look at is um, our review capability. So for organizations who have formal processes that require reviews from different stakeholder, review and sign off from different stakeholder, Storyteller can um, manage that process within the application. So I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna, actually I'll do it from the list view. So I'll choose everything, my backlog, um, I'm going to select a bunch of artifacts, and then I'm going to add them to a review. Um, I'm going to create a new review, call it today's review. Add that. Oops, forgot to select a location. Put that here. So I've started the review, and the review takes you through um, kind of a wizard-like approach um, for each of, the, um, each of the steps you need to do for the review. So we've already pretty much completed the first step, which is add the artifacts that I want to include into the review. So I've done that. Um, I can set approval status. So reviews, you can use them in a number of different ways. You can use them for... Um, actual sign-off, or I find sometimes you can use them just as a way to group a bunch of artifacts you want feedback from, from colleagues without um, necessarily getting them to approve them. In this case, I'm actually, I want to um, select them all and make them all required here. So I'll just, instead of doing it one by one, I'll use the actions here. So this, this review, um, each of these artifacts must be approved to be successful. Next, I add my participants. So I'm going to add myself. And then since um, my artifacts require approval, um, there needs to be at least one approver on the um, on the review. The next step is to take a look at the settings. So I can set things like a review deadline. So I'll set it for, let's say, next Friday um, at 3.37 p.m. That sounds like a great time. I can control um, how much detail is shown in the review by default. Um, so to keep it a little lighter weight. Um, I can force um, users to look at all the artifacts um, and click on them individually, or I can um, let people just kind of scan it. We also have what we call electronic signature, so you can configure this so you can um, have your approvers um, sign off electronically on the review document um, to make it more formal and to meet some audit requirements um, some of our customers have, particularly those in the pharma industry. So once I've got my review set up, I can put it live. So I'll start my review. Since it's a formal review or what we call a formal review, which means it requires approval, the system will also create a baseline in the background, um, a sealed baseline with a copy of the artifacts um, at this point in time. So I can always go back and see what um, version of the artifacts were approved if further changes are made to them later by looking at the seal baseline that's associated with this artifact. Once it's live, I'll see a number of statistics on the front page. So the number of artifacts, the number of participants, who's viewed it, who's approved it, et cetera. 
once it's gone live, all the users or all the participants in the review would have gotten an email um, with a link to the review. So I'll just click, click on the link to the review here and show you what the reviewer's experience is like. So it's in a document format. Um, I can see all the different properties associated with it. Since I chose just all textual artifacts, um, none of the visual artifacts are showing up here. I do have access to properties. I can add discussions. I can add files or traces. Um, I can collapse or expand each of these items. So that lets me um, interact. So I can, you know, I can disapprove something and add a comment as to why I disapproved it. Um, I also have a table of contents here that shows me things more in their hierarchical order. So I'm going to go through and just approve all. All right, and then if we go back to the review, we'll see that this, if I refresh the screen here, we'll see that all my artifacts have been approved. One thing you can do, um, you can also create what's called a follow-up review. So if, um, for example, if all my artifacts only two out of a hundred artifacts didn't get approved and I needed to make changes. I can create a follow-up review that just includes those two artifacts and all the other original settings and have those sent out so I can um, just get approval on the two artifacts that need to be approved need to be approved. I don't have to force my users to go through the entire artifact set again. So I wanted to keep this to that 40 minute time frame. Um, so I've gone a little bit quick here today. Um, I wanted to open it up for any questions that you might have um, about Storyteller and, and the latest release. So do we have any uh, questions in the chat? Yeah, let's take a look. So you can put your questions in the chat below. Just give everyone a few minutes. All right, so a couple of questions here. Um, so the first question is, does Storyteller integrate with any of the Microsoft Office products? Um, yeah, we do actually. So there's a couple different ways that we do work with different Office products. So let me just go back here to give a quick example. So if I look at this in the list view again, I can select multiple different artifacts and then I can export them to Word. So what this will do, you define a document template in Storyteller and then I can export that and each of these artifacts will show up in a Word document. Um, I can also import artifacts from Excel. So if, if, if I have an Excel list of artifacts that I want to bring into Storyteller, I can quickly and easily import those. Um, things we're working on in the future is being able to export to Excel, bringing that into Storyteller, and then even a little bit later on, um, integrating the UME artifact that I showed earlier, the Universal Model Editor, with Visio. Um, in the screen mockup that was shown, can I link requirements to the screen mockup? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, so if we go back and look at that screen mockup, um, I'm trying to remember where I put it, right here. For sake of argument, I could do something like go to this, this, um, in this drop down menu, for example, and I could trace that using our trace functionality. Um, there's two ways to do that. I can do what's called an inline trace. So let's use that or a trace behind the scenes. So if I do an inline trace, um, let's just pretend that this, this story has something about the values that go into that list. 
it doesn't, but just let's pretend. And then I'll put um, a link right be underneath the artifact, let's move it up, that shows me, um, that links to another artifact. So I can go to that artifact, I could open it in a new tab, for example, um, that allows me that would have more information about that um, particular field on, on the form. So that's a really powerful way to add a further dimension to your screen mockups is to link the individual properties um, with links to other artifacts. Okay, um, let's see what we have next. Do you have a question there, Shir? Yeah. One of our users. Um, one of the questions is: Are there any new features in the blue, in the baselines and reviews functionality in Storyteller that aren't currently available in Blueprint 9.1? Um, one of the well, they look. Let's take a look here. So they look. I think in Storyteller they look a little more usable. The functionality is very similar. Um, in terms of sealing them and having the artifacts in them um, and having them store the version that you have. One thing that is different is you no longer have to start with creating a baseline before you can start with a review. Um, as we saw in the demo, um, if you have what we call a formal review, um, it'll automatically create that baseline for you in the background, um, which saves you a little bit of time. Um, next question is, are the BPMN diagrams compliant with the standard? Uh, yeah, they are. So we've uh, made sure to make the diagrams um, 2. Point, I think it's BPMN 2.0 compliant. Um, the current ones in Blueprint don't have the full library. The business process diagram does not have the full library. It has been extend, expanded in Storyteller to include all the shapes and all the different variations that make up that modeling library. Um, there's a question about how you handle diagrams created in Blueprint um, in Storyteller. So we can convert legacy diagrams from Blueprint into the new Storyteller format. Um, what it'll do is it'll create a copy of your diagram in the new format so you don't lose any data and then you can edit it and take advantage of the new features in the storyteller modeling tool um, how does user security work in storyteller do i still use my blueprint username yeah so storyteller and blueprint are basically built on the same foundation um, so all the data you have if you're a Blueprint user is available in Storyteller. Um, all the user groups that you had set up originally in Blueprint apply to Storyteller and you would use the same username and password to access Storyteller as you would Blueprint. Um, so all the questions I can see. Um, do you see any others? Sure. Uh, nope. All right. Well, thank you for submitting your questions. Um, just before we end today, we'd like to, um, we have a couple of brief announcements. So let me bring that back up. Um, so, um, whoops, get to the announcement page. So um, one of the big announcements that we have is for the second year in a row, um, we've been uh, recognized in the Magic Quadrant for the Gartner Magic Quadrant for ad Enterprise Agile Planning Solutions. Um, and we've moved up on the quadrant. So we've moved um, over and up from our placement last year, um, which is a testament to um, how the market is starting to perceive or is perceiving Storyteller as um, an agile planning tool of choice in the market. So that was pretty exciting for us. Um, those who are interested, 
um, you can go to our website and download a copy of the report and, and read about um, the different capabilities and some of the future of agile planning um, applications. On the website, you will also find news about upcoming events and other webinars that we have coming up in the near future. That's it for everything. Anything else? Yep. Yeah, so um, thank you everyone for coming to our uh, demonstration. Um, I'll be sure to send everybody a follow-up email with a, a recording of this demonstration and as well also share a complimentary link to the uh, Magic Quadrant report for everyone if they want, if they're interested in taking a look there. And otherwise, and nobody has any other questions, I think that was a successful webinar. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everyone.